It's what you do. Hello, hello, hello. For today's video, we are doing episode 17 of Draw Your Journal. If you don't know what Draw Your Journal is, it's my journal that I wrote. It's available on Amazon and it's basically supposed to be a prompt journal where you draw about your life. If you like prompt journals like This Is Not A Book, Wreck This Journal, or even Create This Book, you'll probably like Draw Your Journal. The only difference is the prompts are more focused on you and your life. I think of them as visual diary entries. So for this episode, I was trying to figure out which page to do, and I finally decided on draw your question. Draw something you want to know more about. So for me, this is going to be something personal to me, since this is my diary. And I do have one question that has been haunting me for almost nine months now. It's like eight and something. I want to know what my baby looks like. I've had the regular sonograms, like the 2D sonograms, but my doctor does not do 3D sonograms, and I really just want to know what my baby looks like. Like, what does his face look like? As we all know, I am a very visual person, very art artistic. I like art, I like visual things. So it is driving me insane that I don't know what my baby looks like. So I thought for this page, it would be fun if I guessed what my baby looks like. I had a strong debate about what the baby should be wearing. At first I put him in a collared shirt, which honestly I deeply regret changing him out of. Then I changed it to a popped collar, which was weird. Then I put him in a hoodie with bear ears, and then that was cute, but I changed it, erased that, and put him in a hoodie. A regular hoodie. <sighs> I feel like mistakes were made here. I personally wish we could go back to the popped collar, but we landed on the hoodie and we can't go back now. Even if we wish we could. Now that we have a nice sketch of my child, we're going to erase it so you can just barely see it. And I'm going to be taking out something I haven't used in a while. My Himmy gouache set. I opened it up and discovered that it was so crusty. It was disgusting. Everything had dried up and it was no longer the jelly that it once was. I mean, seriously, when I first opened this thing, it used to be little pots of jelly. It was so cute and fun and now it is disgusting. But I figured out that you actually can reactivate Himmy gouache jellies. All you really need is some warm water and time. A lot of time and patience. Also a lot of mixing. Did I mention there was a lot of mixing involved? No? Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of mixing and a lot of mushing. You have to pour the warm water in and then let it sit there for like at least 30 minutes. I would say maybe an hour and then maybe pour some more water in if it soaks it all up. And then there's lots of chunks that are kind of fun to mix, but also kind of not fun to mix. Like they're kind of like chunky and you're like, oh, this is, Interesting, this texture, it feels very mushy. A little bit like clay when you wet it. Oh my gosh, okay, look at this green. This is a perfect example of what I was dealing with. It was very fun, like texturally, it was like kind of gooey, but also a little dangerous. You're like, is this gonna get into the other paint pots? Am I going to ruin everything? Should I be removing this paint pot so that I'm not splashing things into other paint pots? Like so. Ultimately, this one was not that hard to fix. I kind of just mixed it and the color kind of disappeared. So shh, let's just pretend that never happened. This one is disgusting. This looks like actual, shoot, we're all out of white. Not a problem. I actually have an extra tube of white paint because this Hemi gouache ran out of white paint like so quickly. I cleaned up the paint pot and put some extra white in there and we're good to go. And here we have my somewhat revived gouaches. There is still some chunkiness underneath all of the goo, but I'm assuming as the days progress, as the water soaks in, it'll become easier to mix together and Right now, this is usable. So let's take our Draw Your Journal back out. I'm adding some extra pages behind so I don't ruin the other pages. And I'm going to start painting my child's potential face. Now you might be asking yourself, Marissa, where did you get the inspiration for this baby's face? Did it just come poof randomly into your mind? Did you use a combination of maybe what your husband looks like and what you look like and try to morph them together? 
Is this not your child at all, and perhaps just a drawing of your baby born? Poor baby born, please don't cry anymore, cause your mommy is here, baby born, baby born. When baby born cries, she's thirsty. Baby born, baby born. I'm getting off topic. I had a dream. I had a dream like a year and a, no, not this Christmas, the Christmas before. So almost two years, I guess it's a year and a half ago, I had a dream and I had a child and he was a baby boy, okay? So I was already right about the gender. And in this dream, I saw a baby that looked mostly like my husband, but a little like me. And I want to test if this is correct. So I am doing my best to paint a version of the baby that I saw in my dream a year and a half ago. I realize this makes me sound like an insane person to roughly 50% of you, but I am trying to replicate the baby that I saw in the dream a year and a half ago. At this point, a year and a half ago makes things a bit murky. I am trying my best to recall the details. I feel like if I saw the baby in person, I would go, oh yeah, that is 100% the baby from my dream, or no, I was totally incorrect. Like, I'll be able to know when I see my child if I was correct, but for now, we're just guessing. Now, because the dream was so long ago, I did have to take some creative liberties here and I did incorporate what I know my husband's baby picture looked like and what I know my baby picture looked like. When I was a baby, I had a very wide face, very round, circular, big eyes that are far apart. My husband has a taller face that's a little bit, well, it's not really that thin, but I guess as a baby, it was just taller than my face was. My face was shorter and his eyes are pretty wide set, but they're more almond shaped, a little bit less wide and round. I also had to take into consideration the fact that I'm 99% sure my father-in-law cloned himself when he created my husband. They are literally clones of each other. They look exactly the same. It's actually kind of spooky, but I am going based on the assumption that history will repeat itself and I will also have a son that is a clone of my husband. Just a little tiny husband clone walking around my house. The only thing I did decide to change, and this was based off of my dream, my husband has green eyes, but in the dream, the baby had blue eyes, which kind of makes sense. My father-in-law has blue eyes and my mom has blue eyes. So I don't know if the baby's going to have blue eyes, but that was just in my dream. I was leaning towards like a green or a hazel since that makes kind of logically more sense for us, but we're painting it as blue because the dream might be right. I'm adding some finishing details to my very tiny little Polish looking son since my husband is, looks mostly Polish so that's why it looks like a little Polish baby. I am not Polish but I'm assuming yeah it's not gonna look like me but maybe maybe he will look like me. I don't know maybe we'll all be wrong. Once the baby was pretty much done I decided to color in the background or paint in the background with this bright orange or saffron color. And once I had the background painted, I took out my black Sharpie and decided to draw out my question, which is, what will my son look like? I drew a big question mark and filled it in with some of the blue from the eye color. And then I took out my baby shower thank you notes. I have a little tiny picture of my 20 week sonogram of my child. He looked adorable. Look at this, he's the cutest little nose. I thought it would be cute if I added the sonogram to this page. There was a lot of thought and trepidation about where to place the sonogram. Ultimately, I chose the bottom left corner. I don't know if that was a good spot, but that's what I went with. I feel like this sonogram is kind of feasible for the baby I drew, maybe. And here is my final prediction of what my son will look like. I have no way of confirming at this moment if this is actually correct, but I promise when I do a flip through, I'll tell you if I was anywhere near close to guessing correctly. I also realized that this episode did not have as many pages as usual. Like I said in my pregnancy announcement video, some of my videos might be a little shorter or have a little less content for a few months around the time where my baby is born, but I'll still be here posting as usual. I love posting on YouTube and I definitely don't want to stop. If you want to see me do more pages on Draw Your Journal, I have a whole playlist for that linked in one of these two boxes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week for another video.
拜。